Are you bored of doing leg extensions? Well, I'm not, I'll be honest. Um, I love them, I program them all the time for my clients, I use them myself. But let's be honest, you don't wanna be using them all the time. Now there are different methods you can use with them, but it's great to have some options with some exercises that you can use as alternatives as well. Now we know from the research that leg extensions are a great isolation exercise to complement things like squats, hack squats, and leg presses but we also kind of want to mix some other things in there as well which help kind of isolate especially that rectus femoris part of our quadriceps and to kind of throw in at the back end of our workouts to finish off our quad so come follow along where i'm going to share with you today some of my favorites that i program for my clients as well as just like to enjoy it myself so first up as an exercise that you could use instead of leg extensions are reverse Nordic curls. Now you actually don't need any equipment for this whatsoever. Um, one of those super humbling exercises that look a lot easier than actually performing them. Um, I'm using like a balance pad here. It's actually like more like a half balance pad that's fallen apart, um, but you don't necessarily need that, okay? Now with these, the goal is to try to mostly eccentrically overload that rectus femoris part of your quadricep. When you're doing a leg extension, if you're sat in the upright position with your hips flexed because your rectus femoris acts as both a knee extensor and hip flexor, then basically you're kind of working more that shortened range of motion. Um, whereas with these, you're working more in a lengthened range, okay? So we wanna be keeping our hips extended throughout, squeeze your butt just a little bit. I wouldn't squeeze too hard because I feel it can kind of limit that range a little bit for a lot of people. So it's like squeeze of your butt, toe position. Now some people prefer going there, some people prefer going there. Just from experience, I do find that people that go there, they tend to get a little bit more kind of a, a lock up in their calves or their kind of, um, ankle dorsiflexors. So for some people, it tends to kind of feel a little bit better there. I personally like there. It just closely resembles a leg extension as well, all right? And you can also get more range of motion. So hips extended, hands crossed here or by your sides, don't mind. Obviously we're increasing the lever arm there, we're making it a little bit harder. So it's here, all the way back, keeping those hips as extended as we can as far down as you can, and then push those toes into the floor to raise to the top. Now, what you'll find is if you raise too far, you lose that tension in your quads. So we wanna kind of raise about three quarters of the way up, all right? So here, full range of motion, as much of a stretch as you can in those quads, and then three quarters of the way up, and then repeat in that position there, all right? I'm gonna show you a few ways now that you can either scale the movement up or down depending on your level, range of motion, strength, etc. So one obvious way to load these is kind of like in a goblet position or in this position here with a dumbbell, all right? So obviously exactly the same movement, full range of motion all the way down, feel that stretch, return about three quarters of the way up, okay? So that's one way you could make them harder. I do also like a uh, like an augmented eccentric, right? So an augmented eccentric is like an overloaded eccentric. So on the way down, we're lifting heavier, and then we basically release the weight, and then we lift a little bit lighter on the way up. Easiest way to do that is with two dumbbells. So this is one, if you really want your quads to feel sore the next day by applying that eccentric overload, uh, which is a really, really potent growth stimulus, then this is a good option. So I'm gonna control myself back about three, four seconds. We don't need to make that eccentric too long. Um, we're more overloading it with load than time under tension, okay? So all the way down, deep range of motion. Keep those shoulder blades back so we're loading correctly. Release, and then you raise up without them, okay? And then what you can do is reset, grab, and repeat. So here, get that length, release, and then hips flex and raise back up again, okay? Or as I said, you can raise back up again 
with those hips extended if you want to. There's kind of a few different ways you can do it, depending on what you're trying to get out of it. So you can just do the eccentric and release, hips flex, reset, go again, or you can release, keep those hips extended, and then come back to the top where you're loading that concentric as well, but with slightly less weight. So I'm gonna show you another way now where you can overload um, the entire range of motion really, probably one of my favorite to do, um, although the setup is a little bit more challenging. So obviously one downside to the reverse Nordic is that it's so much harder at the back or at the bottom of the movement in that stretch than it is at the top. So we lose tension at the top completely if we come too high, um, but then also we're kind of unloading as well a significant amount the more we raise up. So one way to combat that is to load ourselves. So obviously you've got up to a respectable level with body weight only. Um, you might then incorporate a loaded variation. So some of those I've just shown you with the dumbbells, or you can also use a band. Now, because of the variable resistance of the band, the more it stretches, the more load you get from the band. This works really well with the reverse Nordic curl. So at the top where the band is stretched the most, I'm getting the most load. So it's increasing the challenge at the top more. Whereas when I come back, it's unloading, um, but then also kind of playing with the exercise um, in terms of kind of matching where I want it to be hardest and where I want it to kind of not be as hard, all right? So same idea. I like to kind of have my thumbs underneath that band. It's more for comfort than anything else. I've obviously got the band at shoulders height. You can have it overhead and you can set it a little bit higher if you want to. So same idea. I'm getting that full range of motion, big stretch. And then as I come up, that band is allowing that tension or some of that tension to be maintained in my quads towards the top. Again, we're only kind of coming three quarters of the way up here, all right? But even if you come to the top, you should feel some tension still in your quads. Whereas without the band, you don't get anything whatsoever. Obviously providing you're pressing those toes still into the floor. So nice four inch of motion, big stretch. And then here, four inch of motion, big stretch and then here, okay? So that's another way you can overload. Now I'm gonna show you another variation in this position. Now, I actually like these combined with leg extensions and it's to do the reverse Nordic curl in an ISO hold. So imagine you've either, you can do this as a superset, so you can do your leg extensions first and then these, or you can do your leg extensions first and then finish your workouts with these. So we're kind of overloading that length and range of motion in an isometric position, okay? So we're isometrically contracting the muscle at the bottom of the movement, all right? So we're here, and you might do this for anywhere between like 10 and 60 seconds. Um, again, it depends on other factors within your programming, depends on how you're using them, in, as I said, in the context of the rest of the programming, all right? I tend to, when I program, say hold as long as you can, okay? And, it, and, that, and that's just because of how I program in them in conjunction with other exercises that I might use them with, all right? So it's here, all the way back, find that stretch, and then hold the stretch. Now, I'm not coming all the way down here because obviously I'm losing tension because I'm sitting my butt on my heels, all right? But instead, I'm kind of coming just a little bit off dropping and hold. So I'm squeezing, squeezing, squeezing for as long as I can and then once I'm finished, I'll just drop, all right? So that's another great option to kind of add some intensity into that exercise um, and without any weight whatsoever. But as I said, I like that one as like a superset with leg extensions um, or as like something that you might finish off with, create a lot of blood occlusion, create a lot of tension in that isometric kind of lengthened position within that muscle. Now, I love Nordic. I'll reverse Nordic curls. Um, so we're gonna stay with these for a minute before I show you some alternative exercises for your leg extensions. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple of ways you can make this exercise easier if you can't do the body weight version. I'll show you two options to make them easier. Um, this is probably the easiest one to set up, the one that most people kind of have the most confidence in, and that's to have some kind of stability ball behind you. So you can either have a stability ball, obviously vary the size of that stability ball, um, and I'll explain why in just a second, or you can have like a wall ball, like a giant medicine ball behind you as well if you want to. So the smaller the ball, 
the more range of motion you'll be able to get, but then also obviously you can vary how far out from that ball that you are as well. So it's just kind of finding the right one for you really. Um, so basically, I'll just show you how it, how it works and you'll get the idea, all right? So all I'm doing with my reverse Nordic is just using that ball as like a bit of a depth gauge, all right? So it's limiting how far I can go back and then I just repeat that motion, okay? So as obviously my strength improves, I can maybe take myself further away from that ball or I can use a smaller ball. But I think, especially for beginners, just having something behind you as like a bit of security and that stopping point to gauge that range of motion is really, really useful because then over time you can take it away and they suddenly find themselves getting that full range of motion, getting a nice deep stretch um, with their body weight and then obviously progressing in load over the time. Now, even with some high level physique athletes that are super strong, this exercise is challenging for them. So there's still a use for this in those types of people as well. Now, I'm just gonna quickly show you another way you can assist the exercise, and um, just by turning myself around. So as before, I'm gonna use the band, but I'm gonna use the band as a way to assist me on the way down. So again, because of the way the band is, um, and that obviously it's, because I'm doing it this way around, okay, so I'll, I'll show you, it's pretty easy just to show you. Because I'm doing it this way around, as I come back, that band stretches and assists me more in the hardest part of the exercise and then unloads a little bit more in kind of the easiest portion of the exercise. So I hold on to my band, I come as far back as I can and then up to the top, okay? So obviously that band is assisting me more at the bottom than it, as it is at the top. And band, super easy. If you wanna make it even easier, you can just use a thicker resistance band. And then over time, as you get stronger, a thinner resistance band. Obviously, you can also hold that band in different positions, different lengths, um, which obviously means more or less tension in the band, more or less assistance in the band. So we spent a lot of time on reverse Nordics, but to give you max value, I'm gonna show you a few more exercises that I like instead of leg extensions or just as an alternative once a sprinkling sprinkling you can even use them in conjunction with leg extensions sissy squats definitely not for sissies they're actually named after um the greek i think it was a god greek god sisyphus um who i think did something very naughty um and then was banned by the other gods uh for eternity um and was made to kind of push a boulder up a mountain um, in reverse, so it was kind of like pushing a boulder up a mountain like that um, forever. Um, and if you look at a lot of kind of the um, ancient Greek um, statues and kind of images of Sisyphus, he had these giant quads. Um, but the movement is very similar to kind of what Sisyphus was, was banned at doing. Now, any kind of um, Greek history buffs out there, um, you're probably going to tell me half of that story was wrong, but you catch my drift, okay? Um, I'm an exercise guy, so uh, yeah, history isn't my thing, but anyway, Sisyphus, all right? So sissy squats. There's a few ways to do these. Um, the most kind of old school way you'd find doing these, so like bodybuilders from like the 70s, 80s, um, tended to be just holding on to something with one hand and then dropping down into that sissy squat, okay? Now, I'm not as big a fan of that, um, I find that people are challenged just in a slightly more of a rotational capacity. Um, it changes it so there's a little bit more load on one side than the other, um, especially uh, for people that aren't kind of used to performing them. So I tend to like a more assisted version, even for advanced people, but a more assisted version, either using some rings or using like a Smith machine or a bar um, in your rack. So imagine you've got a bar set up there, something that you can hold with both hands, um, or as I said, some rings or like a, a TRX or other suspension trainer brand, okay? So you can have them here or you can walk out with elbows a little bit straighter. I like them here, all right? So we're gonna have our heels leave the body. Now this is a purposeful knees driving over toes motion. Your knees going over your toes will not ruin your knees. If anything, it will build, um, kind of build more 
um, resilient knees, okay? Really great for tendon strengthening, but then also as with the reverse Nordic curl, a really good option to load, especially that rectus femoris muscle, because our hips are in that extended position um, and we're getting a lot of length through that part of our quadriceps in particular, okay? So really great to build knee resilience as well as just a great exercise to add some, some lean mass to your quadriceps, all right? So I'm here, I'm back, my heels are off the floor, my knees are coming forward, as much range of motion as you can. Now if my range of motion is there, then that's fine, okay? If that's all I've got, that's absolutely fine. Over time, you can work deeper and deeper and deeper, okay? Now, what you can do, you can put like an Airx pad or even two on the floor to kind of act as a bit of a depth gauge, um, or you can go straight in and you can try and get your knees all the way to the floor, all right? So it's here, heels off the floor, control, 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 control. It's as close to the floor as you can, and then here. So if you notice at the top, I'm leaning slightly back as well. So it's here, 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 and through, okay? Now there are people that are a lot better than me at this exercise. Um, I'm in kind of like a mass building phase at the moment, so I'm slightly more on the heavy side, which you know makes any body weight exercise a little bit more challenging. Um, now I've only done a few reps of those and already I'm feeling kind of like my quads blow up. Um, so sissy squats, good option. There are even some people that can do it without holding onto anything whatsoever, but I do feel that holding onto something, again, just from a stability perspective, um, and at the end of the day, I'm talking to, to you guys that wanna build some lean muscle mass, it's gonna be a lot more beneficial, um, even if you're able to get some more reps out of it. So, sissy squats, there's another great option to your leg extensions, super humbling, it will blow up your legs, give them a shot. Last one I'm gonna share with you are Kung Fu lunges. Now, these have been called different things. Um, some people call them duck lunges, although duck lunges are more like duck, like your knees come out, it's a bit more of a waddle. I call them kung fu lunges. Um, there was someone, I won't mention any names, there was someone a few years ago that, that claimed to like have made this exercise up themselves. Um, but as the article I wrote, <laughs> um, They've been around for years. I call them Kung Fu lunges because they've been using martial arts for years and years and years as warm-ups, as conditioning, um, and yeah, to, to varying degrees across the globe and probably for centuries, okay? So let's just call them Kung Fu lunges, all right? So it's a lunge variation, but it's more of an isolating lunge variation on one you can finish off your workouts with. I like to do this as like a time set of like one to two minutes, absolutely brutal. Two sets, tops, sometimes even just one set, all right? So, Kung Fu lunges. What we're gonna do is start in a low position. Now, the way we're gonna do these, slightly different to how they're traditionally done um, in kind of the martial arts world, we're gonna emphasize the back knee, all right? So, we're gonna imagine um, we've got a really low roof, we're gonna stay down as long as we can, okay? We're gonna have our hands crossed, and as we step forwards, we're really gonna emphasize that back knee down towards the floor. So stay low, emphasize the back knee. Stay low, emphasize the back knee. Stay low, emphasize the back knee, okay? So I'm just gonna show you that again. Okay, so we start in that low position. We cross our hands. If you wanna make these more challenging, you can hold a kettlebell or a dumbbell, like in that goblet or hamburger position if you want to. Okay, so you can hold it there. But without, like, it's super challenging anyway, all right? So here, stay low. Emphasize the back knee. Emphasize the back knee. Emphasize the back knee, okay? Now, imagine I'm doing this for two minutes. I'll just kind of turn around and just repeat, okay? So I'm trying not to kind of come up for air for like 60 to 90 seconds, all right? So obviously, if you've got more space to work with, you don't need to turn around so much, but you get the idea, okay? Super brutal. Really good option to finish your workouts with, um, especially if you don't have access to a leg extension or someone's taking up the leg extension, or even if you want to include them um, as part of like a leg extension superset, before your leg extensions, after your leg extensions, there's so many ways that you can apply them into your own training. Again, depends on the context. Context is always key when it comes to programming, time of year, what you're training for, injuries, etc., etc all need to be taken into account when you're kind of structuring your workouts, okay? So the idea behind videos like these are just to kind of give you ideas that you can slot 
into your own workouts um, and obviously exercises that I use in um, more precise programming um, that I obviously apply with my clients for, for great results. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the YouTube video. I say hopefully you did. You definitely enjoyed this YouTube video because it's given you some great options to use instead of your leg extensions. Remember, if you liked this video, hit the like button, drop a comment below if you've got any feedback or future ideas you want me to include in YouTube videos or just there's a simple question you want me to kind of give an answer to. Um, and remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss future YouTubes. We'll chat soon.